lighting is a bit off today and I apologise. The weather is a bit mad here. Um, good morning and welcome to this Nanny Knits episode number two of this knitting podcast. My name is Lucy, I am a nanny who knits. Today is Friday the 11th of June, um, it's still the morning. I have dropped the children off at school and preschool and so I had an opportunity to record this morning before I go and pick them up this afternoon. Um, a massive thank you to everybody that watched episode number one. I really appreciate you watching and thank you so much for all your comments and your positivity. It was really kind um, and a big warm welcome if this is your first episode watching. Thank you for being here. Um, I guess I should do the spiel first, shouldn't I? Um, you can find me on Instagram as This Nanny Knits and Ravelry. I've changed my Ravelry name. Um, I tried to get this nanny knits, but somebody already has it. So I was a little inventive, uh, not really. And I have changed it to this nanny knits, but instead of a T for this, it's a seven, <laughs> because that was what was available. <laughs> you are welcome. But I will um, link everything down below because the, yeah, that could be confusing and difficult um, to find me. So I realised after filming the last episode that I did not discuss the frequency of this podcast. So I probably should do that. I'm thinking at the moment it will probably be every fortnight, mostly because I don't have a great time, deal of time to knit during the week. So I think my content would be the same. It would be like here, here's this shirt that I made that is exactly the same place as it was last week or here, here's this lonely sock whose partner I haven't cast on yet. So I think two every two weeks would be ideal right now. I will probably reevaluate that in September um, because my hours at work will drop slightly. The youngest is going to school. Um, so I will have a bit more free time, which means more knitting time, which could mean more content. So ev for now, every two weeks is the plan. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. So I have a few notes down here, which is why I'm peeking down. This brain cannot remember very much at all, particularly in the morning when I haven't finished my coffee. This really cute mug, if you haven't spotted, I had to use it today. Um, my mum gifted me as part of my birthday present last week and it says knitting keeps me from unravelling and it's obviously a ball of yarn which I thought was really cute. Um, so that obviously had to feature in this week's podcast. So first of all we will start with finished objects and what I'm wearing. As you can see I did finish my rocket tee. So here it is. It's not blocked because I wanted to be able to show it on the podcast and that would mean it would probably still be wet and I wouldn't be able to wear it. So bear with me, these, un these rolled sleeves are not a feature. <laughs> it's just the eye cord bind off um, rolling up. But let me show you. I don't think I can show you all that well, um, but I'm pleased with it. It's obviously all rolling up here too. And I have ends that I haven't woven in, which is typical of me, but I will do that after I've blocked it. I've got the eye cord edging around the neckline, both sleeves and around the bottom. So I really enjoyed making this in the end when I finally ditched the mohair and made it in this um, fingering weight yarn, which I should mention, I think I did before, but I'll mention it again um, if you're new here and didn't see it last time. And I now know after watching my last recording back uh, that this is not backwards for you. <laughs> so this is by Skeen Queen. It's hand dyed here in the UK, um, quite locally to me. And this is on her crush base, which is a 75% superwash merino and a 25% nylon. And the color is Blue Star. So I used, I don't actually know where I put my, yes I do, bear with me. I obviously had some left over, ta-da, here of this one. I didn't weigh it actually, I probably should have, but I used two skeins for this um, rocket tee. 
I did the yoke and not the yoke. I did all of the raglan increases, um, split for the sleeves, and then I, I did that with one skein and obviously had some left over. And then I used helical knitting in the round all the way around down to the bottom so that I could incorporate the second skein so I didn't have any weird colour pooling issues. So this is what I ended up with. This is what's left. So this will go into my scrappy bag for my scrappy projects, uh, my cosy memories and my granny stripe probably once it's made a square on there. So I use the recommended size needles which for now for the life of me I cannot remember but I think I was in 3.75 off the top of my mind, but I will link it all down below on my Ravelry page, which I probably should update because I don't think I have. Um, so you can check it out down there if you want to, but I'm hoping to get this blocked now that I've shown it to you and I can actually start wearing it because the weather's a bit funny here. So it's been really, really warm the last few days, um, but really cloudy. So it is warm, but it's not that real heat of the sun warm. So I probably could get away with wearing it because it's quite light. I've just got a um, a white vest on underneath because I was a bit worried about it being see-through. Um, well, I wear a white vest normally under all my knits. I don't know what it is. I have this like irrational fear of, it's really ridiculous when I say it out loud, of being somewhere and I don't know, what if you catch it and it all starts unraveling and you've got like nothing on underneath? I know that would be really embarrassing and it that wouldn't happen. It wouldn't unravel. Obviously I'll weave in all my ends and whatever but I don't know I always have that fear it's just me being a bit strange um so yes this is the rocket tee I'm going to continue to wear it because I don't really want to just sit here in my vest but that will be blocked and worn quite a lot I imagine I really want to make another one let's I probably shouldn't go off on a tangent but I do really want to make another one and I want to master it with the mohair so I do still have the white mohair that I was intending to strike with this so I might, I don't know, will I make it this year? Might be unlikely because I've already made one, but I definitely do. And I think I want to make one in a pinky colour. I am a pinky girl normally. So I think pink and white, a variegated pink, not a solid, but I think that's my plan. Anyway, moving on, I have one other finished object and it looks very much like the finished object I had last time, but it isn't. Um, if you saw episode one, I made a pair of shorty socks exactly identical to this for my mum. And this is my pair. I gifted hers to her for her birthday and she loved them. But I have finally finished the pair for myself. Again, not blocked, but um, I, I wonder if I have the tag for this. I do. See, I was semi-organised. This is Woolly Mama Yarns and it is the colorway meet me in maui can you see that there yeah it is a four ply fingering 75 percent merino 25 percent nylon um yeah i love this yarn i just love the bright colors i think it's really really me um not much to say about them i knit them on chowgu nine inch 2.25 circulars I did a two by two rib for about 10 rounds, I think. Yeah, that's normally my, my standard. Then I did five rounds of stockinette before I started the slip stitch heel flap and gusset, heel turn, decrease back down. I do 60 stitches for me and mum around. And then I just did the regular, I don't know, don't even know if it has a name to be honest. I keep. I keep watching people and listening to people talking about, you know, the rounded toe or the square toe. And I have no idea what kind of toe this is. I guess it's more round, more square than rounded, but it is the one in um, the Crazy Sock Ladies patterns, basically. That's just the, the decreases. Um, on her vanilla sock patterns, I should add, because there could be different heels and different patterns. I'm not, uh, different toes, sorry, in different patterns. I'm not sure. I've not done too many of hers because I just quite like the mindless knit of a vanilla sock to be honest so they are done they are going to add to my collection i probably won't wear them much now it's summer here um finally the flip-flops are out so i don't imagine i'll wear much of them but i will be knitting a ton of them so i'll have plenty when it gets cooler again 
that's it for finished objects um i did have a week off and i thought i would get way more knitting done than anticipated but actually as i say the weather was really nice here my husband also had the week off and it was my birthday week so we were out and about we were doing a lot of things um so i didn't get much knitting time really but more of that later um i have a couple of whips i do have a couple of whips let me show you those I so summer sock camp started so I was waiting to cast on all the socks and as you know I showed you last time that I had all of my yarns ready my needles in the bags everything ready and raring to go but this pair are looking a bit sad I didn't get very far unfortunately um and that's through no reason of the pattern or my intention for this sock but I just haven't got round to it and I to be honest forgot a little bit about it I did get the cuffs done, matching. I'm gonna try and do these in tandem. I don't normally do that. Um, and I don't normally suffer from second sock syndrome. I am quite good at finishing a pair, but I really wanted to kind of give it a go in tandem because this is going to be a pattern sock and I thought that might be quite useful. Yeah, to have them on the go. So I have the needles and I thought, why not? So I have done a two by two rib again, which is my favorite. These look a little bit longer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, they are 10 round, a 10 round rib. Um, and this is going to be the String of Hearts sock pattern by Maddie Hobbs. I just haven't started the pattern. I'm ready to, I've done the one round of knit ready to go. And then, um, Yes, I need to give them some attention this week. I've got my cable needle ready. I've not done a lot of cables and I think that's maybe what is deterring me from starting. I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I don't like to make mistakes and I don't like frogging and I get really disheartened when things don't go my way. So I've had to kind of have a little chat with myself and just be like, Lucy, it is just knitting. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't go right. You can rip it back, you can start again, you know, just get over it, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even show you the um, the yarn label. Do I even have the yarn label? Oh my gosh, Lucy, you're a mess. I don't think I do. It is, no, wait, I take that back. I do, you'd think I'd be a bit more organized by now, wouldn't you? This is Castle View Yarns. I love these yarns. I've recently found this um, yarn dye here in the UK and I'm a little bit obsessed, I'm not gonna lie. And this is in Summer Breeze. And again, it's a sock a sock yarn and it's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So yeah, I'm sorry I haven't, I'm saying sorry to myself. I'm sorry I haven't started these heart socks, but I will very soon. Next is surprise, surprise, another sock. I actually have a half finished object, I guess, that I could have put in the finished object section, but I have another sock, another shorty. Um, it's pretty much identical in the pattern, you know, in the um, specifications that I've done. Although I did a one by one rib this time for the cuff. Five rounds, slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, decrease down, 60 stitches round. The only difference is, for this one, I was inspired to try DPNs. I have used DPNs before, when I first began sock knitting, but oh, I just find them so fiddly. It's the beginning, I think. Once I get started, I'm fine, but the beginning is so fiddly and it puts me off. And I remember when I started with them, I'd make mistake after mistake. I'd twist the cast on and got really frustrated. But now I'm a little bit more experienced. I figured I would give it another go. Um, Natalie from Blush Yarns is the cabin counsellor for DPNs and she is in our Love and Stitches membership. And so she's kind of egged us on to give it a go if we want to. And yeah, I wanted to. I got myself some Chow Goo 2.25 double, um, double pointed needles. Yes, that is the right word, Lucy. DPNs. Because I couldn't find my other DPNs. I have a set of Knit Pro DPNs in what I thought was all the sizes. 
and I went to the case and I couldn't find them. When these arrived, I went to get my needle cosy to put in and to start my sock and guess where I found my Knit Pro ones? In here! <laughs> I just hadn't put them back so I now have two sets of um, 2.25 DPMs but that's fine, you can never have too many. Um, yeah, so I need to cast on the second one for these. I literally only finished it last night. I did actually really enjoy the DPMs once I got into the swing of it. I do have a little bit of trouble with laddering, which does put me off a little, which I think is why the nine inch are my favorite. So you probably can see, yeah, look down here where um, my tension isn't brilliant. And it is in kind of the joins on all four of the needles, but I'm hoping with a bit of blocking, maybe that won't be so noticeable. And actually, do you know what? These are for mum and she won't care. She, would, she doesn't even look at the knitting that closely. She just puts them on her feet and enjoys them for what they are. So she's a very knit worthy person. She does love a good hand knit. So I've got plenty of that yarn left. Again, this is a Woolly Mama yarn. And this one is in the colourway Rainbow Electric. It's again 75 to 25 fingering weight yarn. So that is all in there to cast on the second sock. And then I'm hoping that I'll have enough to make me a matching pair. However, I did take this to work with me. It must have been yesterday or the day before. And the little girl I look after, she's three. And I pulled this out and I was going to do a bit of knitting while she was having an afternoon nap because she still loves an afternoon nap and bless her she was so interested and asked me a thousand questions about what I was making and who was it for and that she loved the rainbow colour and would I make her a pair of socks so maybe I won't get a pair of socks out of what's left although I've got a feeling if I make her a pair of socks out of this colour her sister is going to want a pair so maybe I just need to order another skein and we can all have matching socks <laughs> um, but I thought that was really sweet that she was that interested and that she really wanted to pair. And actually I've never made children's socks before. So if you have any patterns that you have used or that you know of for children, I'm just not sure. It'll probably just be a plain sock, that's my vision, but I'm not sure of sizing for children's socks. Um, I think it would probably just be easier if there was a pattern out there that I could follow for different kind of age categories, but um to be honest i haven't even looked myself but if you do have a go-to um sock pattern for children please do leave a comment below and i will check it out that would be awesome and right what have i got left that's that whip i have one other whip to show you which was not intentional it was a total it caught me by surprise um, I saw a test knit call on Instagram from Amanda at the Indecisive Crafter and she has got a awesome pattern coming up that is called the Cascading Chevron Cardigan and I love a test knit. I've only done a couple before, mostly because I tell myself that I'm not experienced enough to do them. Um, but I really just want to kind of dive right in and get to learn new techniques and new things. And I think what a better way of doing it than test knitting. It kind of throws you in the deep end. You obviously get the awesome patterns that come out sooner um, because they are not yet released. And just why not? Like, I have to kind of tell myself that you can do it you just need to bite the bullet and get it done and this was a really awesome pattern and I love it and I probably should have got a picture of it to show you but I will pop one in here from Amanda's Instagram so yeah she very kindly I applied and she very kindly accepted and so I'm going to make the Cascading Chevron's cardigan and I am going to make it in this colour. So this is like a plummy, I'm hoping that's, yeah, it's probably right there. It's probably the best kind of match for its real life colour. Um, 
yes I'm using this colour so I thought it would be really autumnal uh, and I would probably get quite a lot of use out of this come autumn and winter it's quite squishy and quite warm and soft um, so the yarn is actually from my local uh, craft shop it's from Hobbycraft and I don't shop there a lot for yarn because I do love hand dyed yarn and I love the quality of hand dyed yarn but I thought for something this big and for something that I would probably wear a lot to work and around the children I didn't want to spend an, a massive amount of money on it because you know what it's like around the children it's going to get food on it it's going to get all sorts on it and I was looking online in Hobbycraft anyway for some other bits and bobs and I thought oh, I'll just go and have a look in the yarn section as I always have a little browse and see what they've got because they're always adding new things and I saw this colour and I thought oh my goodness I love it and then I was like oh but it's the Women's Institute yarn do I have the label again I'm really bad with labels I might have put it in the pocket no I obviously didn't um but anyways the women's institute yarn oh i'm so sorry i thought i had it here um if i can find it i'll put a little clip of it in here but it's the women's institute yarn which normally is not my first choice because it's normally an acrylic blend and that's not really something that i love to wear because i do find it quite scratchy but actually this one is 100 percent wool which i was pleasantly surprised buy um, and I love the colour and I needed about well I think I needed just over five balls so I got six obviously because I don't want to run out I don't want to run short so it was a really good price point um, they're normally yeah it was actually they're normally three for two as well in hobby craft so I think I got six of these for like 27 pounds so really really affordable it's really soft it's kind of got a little bit of a fuzzy a fuzzy haze to it I don't know if you can see um but yeah I'm really happy with this yarn choice as I say it's not something I normally go for but I do have to be quite careful with what yarns I choose as to whether I'm going to wear it to work or I'm not um because I tend to wear my hand dyed um my knits that are made out of hand dyed yarn at the weekends so that they're not around children that they don't get all sorts of things on them you know what they're like with glue and paint and I get all sorts on me so I started I haven't got very far because I had issues with my gauge swatch now I did gauge swatch as you can see right here which I have to admit it's not something I do all that often I have started doing it more frequently now I'm doing more garments and things I have made an effort to obviously meet gauge and I did with my rocket tee because it is important you want the item that you're spending so long knitting to fit in the end so I did this was my third try at my gauge swatch because I couldn't meet gauge on the recommended needles I think the recommended what have I got here yeah so the recommended were 5.5 in the pattern but I wasn't getting enough stitches um, so I had to go down to a 4.5 so now I meet gauge I'm very happy with the the material like the feel of the fabric that is made on that size needle um, I've blocked it I've measured it all is good for the gauge swatch so I'm gonna keep hold of that I don't think I'll need it for the for the yarn at the end of the project I don't think I'm gonna need to unravel but you never know so I made a start as I say I haven't got too far um but this is knit from bottom up because it's a cardigan and it's not knit in the round it's knit back and forth obviously because it's not joined in the round so this is it this is all i have but it's a good start um i didn't mention that this is a dk weight yarn so it should knit up pretty quickly and as you can see i think you can see the chevrons are starting to peep through it's a really 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 good pattern so far i've really enjoyed it it's something that you can sit and do in the evening whilst you know just chilling out watching tv or whatever 
because it's not too tricky. So obviously you've got to watch your stitch count and you do so many knits and pearls and whatever, but it's not too complicated um, because that's that's the time that I get to knit the most really is when I've got home from work and I've done dinner and I've tidied up and I sit down and watch TV with my husband for a couple of hours um, and I am easily distracted. So I can't, which is why I've not tried the socks, the string apart socks, because I can't, really do something that intricate and watch tv at the same time but it's also important that i sit there and do spend some time with my husband and not go off to another room <laughs> to knit and be unsociable as much as sometimes i'd love to do that but yeah i'm really happy with it so far i love the color so so much it's a real um real plummy deep maroony color and it's a color that i wear quite often in the autumn so really pleased with this um four point five i think i said that needle chow goo i'm not sure what length it doesn't really matter because it's not in the round but i've got a 30 inch cord um yeah really love it so far so good obviously i'm not very far but we will see some progress on that hopefully in the next couple of weeks so that is it for whips and finished objects not a lot to show you um Let's just have a bit of coffee, because this is going to be really cold, isn't it? Oh. It is, pretty much. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so, let's talk new cast-ons. There are some things that I'd really want to make. So I'm obviously going to be casting on more socks. It's summer sock camp, and you have to have socks on the needles. I have got a list of a few pattern socks that I want to make. So I'm going to kind of work my way through those. And I'm, my ambition is to, my ambition? That's not the right word. <laughs> my intention is to knit socks on different needles. So I've obviously done some DPNs. I'm doing nine inch circulars. I have got two 16 inch chow goo. So I'm going to try and do that on two circulars. I know the crazy sock lady has a tutorial that has gone up for that. So I'm going to have a little look at that just to make sure that I'm doing that right. Um, but yes, new cast ons. Tell me what you're making. Inspire me. I, I've i really been looking for something a bit more summery, kind of a bit like this, I guess. This inspired my, um, my summer spring knits. I would like something similar something with a shorter sleeve or not shorter but you know a short sleeve like this or maybe slightly longer but I don't want it to be full length I want it to be fingering weight so it's quite light and can be worn in the spring and the summer but I just don't know what I want to make I was looking at the summer sorrel tea and I love the way that people are doing it with the three fades but I haven't yet found the perfect yarn for it and I'm umming and ahhing about it a bit and as much as I love it I think I love it more in the the warmer, um, the thicker, what am I trying to say? I think I love it more in the wintry version with the long sleeve. So I'm thinking I might save it and make it in the autumn and the winter. Which means I am still looking for something else to make and I'm a bit stuck. I did watch this morning, this is going off on a bit of a tangent, but I have to tell you, I did watch this morning um, Laura's podcast from Penrose Knits and she is making, oh my goodness, the Seaborn Tea. It is beautiful. She's test knitting it, so it's not even a pattern that's out yet, unfortunately, but it is stunning and it is right up my street and I was like, oh my goodness, I need to make this. And I will make it for sure, but it doesn't come out. I think I looked... I'm so sorry, I can't even remember the designer now. I'll link the um, the Instagram page down below. But I went to look on her Instagram and I think it's being released at the end of July. And I kind of want something to cast on right now. <laughs> so I definitely will make that one, but I'm impatient and I need something to make now and I don't know what I want to make. So if you have any ideas or anything that you're making that you're really enjoying knitting that's quite summery, shortish sleeves, please, please, please 
leave a message or a comment down below and I I love reading all the comments down below and getting back to you all um, yeah and I'd be really inspired to see what you're making so I think that's it that's all I'm planning to cast on I think I need one larger garment along with the socks that are portable that I can take around with me and obviously I've got the test knit on the go so I think for me that's probably a real manageable number um, I do have my Cozy Memories blanket and my Granny Strike blankets, but to be honest, I haven't really worked on them since I showed them to you last. They're probably not something that's going to feature every fortnight because I just don't, I just don't reach for them as often as I should. Maybe they'll make an appearance every few months. I don't know. So, um, Yarny Mail. I have had some Yarny Mail. Not a lot. I am still waiting for quite a bit, actually. Um, and I was hoping that some of it might be here this morning to show you, but our postman has, or post lady, maybe, sorry, I don't know, um, tends to come later in the afternoon around two o'clock and I don't have time to podcast then. So I will have to save it for you for another time, but I will show you what I do have. This one I acquired for my birthday from my mum, which actually really surprised me because she doesn't buy me yarn. She doesn't know a lot about knitting like she she would tell you that herself um but it's really pretty and yeah she bought it for me as a present she, was, she stuffed it in my mug really um <laughs> for me to make some socks so she bought some sock yarn and I did say to her did you just buy this because you like this sock yarn and you're hoping to get a pair of socks out of this um and she didn't respond so I'm thinking that's probably probably why <laughs> but this I don't actually even know where she bought this I probably should have asked her um I was in a bit of a rush on my birthday I was going out for dinner so it was a quick pop in grab my presents and run which is really bad but she she told me that that was fine um I can't even pronounce it Chappelle Chappelle maybe um animal no not animal I say animal because it said cat print Admiral cat print. Hmm. Never heard of them. I've no idea where she got it, like I say, but I'll find out and um, I'll leave a link below. I think it's a German brand because I did a bit of German in school and looks like German to me. Can't read it now. I'm not, I'm not very good at German now, but it does have a tag that said knitting can be addictive. And that is something I would absolutely agree with. So anyway, Lucy, stop rambling on. This is a 75% wool and a 25% nylon. So perfect for socks. It is 100 grams. Oh, does it say how much is on here? Yes, 420 meters. I was trying to pick out the English bits amongst the German. 420 meters in this 100 gram skein and it looks to me like it's going to be striping it's got a kind of little bit on the back here to kind of show you how it's going to work up so yeah that'll be fun I might use that for a summer sock pattern a summer sock camp sock even my words today seriously it's because it's Friday guys I'm holding out for the weekend <laughs> but I got that one and yeah only one other thing oh my goodness so sorry there's a little bit of rustling these are from ducky darlings yarns i recently found them i don't even know i think i saw somebody else talking about them on instagram or um here's their details on instagram or maybe a podcast or something but i found them somewhere i don't know i'm quite pleased i did um, I did mention them briefly in my last episode because I was explaining about um, the Mandy's making sock sets that um, Amanda sells, but I'm never lucky enough to get my hands on because the time zones and yeah, they're, they're really popular and I really struggle to, to get them. I've been lucky enough to knit a pair with my friend Erica. She very kindly sent me some. But I have found an alternative here in the UK, so I will still continue to try and get Mandy's yarn and maybe I just need to set an alarm and get up really early or get up really late or something. But um, 
as I mentioned in my last podcast episode, I was giving a gift to my first ever follower on Instagram, which was Charlie Mitten. And I contacted Charlie and said it would be really fun. Sorry, Charlie contacted me and we decided it would be really fun to make a pair of socks together along the lines of the share a pairs. Um, but Ducky Darlings, oh, it's falling. Ducky Darlings do something very similar. So I sent Charlie the link to her website and asked her if she would like to pick a colour um, of her choosing. And she did. And this is what she chose. I just love these. It's kind of a neutrally beigey, browny colour with this yellow. But this yellow has got some beautiful specks in it. Um, really nice and I can really see these working well together as a pair so does this say the colorway oh my goodness I don't think it does oh no I'm not that organized am I I'm sure it was something to do with I don't know I will I will link the website down below um and put the color name of these I thought it was on the tag but it's not, but it does have a colourway because Charlie obviously messaged me and said, oh, she really liked these ones. Anyway, these are called sister sets rather than um, share a pair, which I really liked. And they are 75% merino, 25% nylon, and they're 50 grams each. So you get 100 grams all in and they are hand dyed here in the UK in Derbyshire. So this set is for me and I haven't opened them, but this set is for Charlie. I'm going to post this off to you now, Charlie. Um, I haven't done so beforehand because I wanted to share them. Not that you can really see yours, but I am going to send that off to you today. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to knitting these up with Charlie. I think that'll be really fun. And another pair of socks is always really handy. That is all I have acquired. It's not very much. Um, that's not true. I'm telling a fib. One moment. It's absolutely not true. I did get my scrappy swap parcel. So I mentioned briefly last time in the first episode that I was part of Nitty Natty's Love and Stitches membership. And within the membership, a month or so ago, a month and a bit ago, I can't remember when, we signed up to do a scrappy swap. If you wanted to, you were able to. If you didn't, that was fine. But um, I've never done a scrappy swap and I was really excited. And as you know, I've got a couple of scrappy projects. So I thought, oh, that would be great. So I was partnered up with a lovely lady in California called Gretchen. She has a podcast, by the way, which you should definitely check out. It is Knit Mania. I will link her down below and I received my parcel and I was super excited because she only mailed it off last Tuesday which was the first because it was summer sock camp and I received it this Tuesday so it only took a week to come all the way from California I was so impressed I'm hoping that that means that she has received hers that I've sent her already um I must message her and ask her there may be a little bit of rustling because I haven't taken it out of the packaging, but I wanted to share it with you because some of these yarns, well, all of these yarns are just beautiful. So I had a little note from Gretchen in there, which was really nice. And yeah, let's just get into the yarn, shall we? I will take one out and show you what I have got. Now, I don't know the names of all of these yarns because it's obviously a scrappy project. Um, they're obviously scrappy swaps and so we weren't obliged to put the names if we knew them it was great but it doesn't really matter to me because I am just going to make something beautiful out of them so let me share them with you I have got this awesome kind of greeny it reminds me of like apple green with these pinky bits here I won't take too long with this guys because I know that this could be time consuming I have another green tonal here which is awesome and Gretchen actually has started making I think she's just started making these little um progress keepers so she made a couple for me and this is really cute it's like a little ball ball but it's got little balls in it which I love really sweet 
Um, yeah, this one is so, so beautiful. It's kind of, it's got quite a high twist to it and I actually really like it. Um, so I probably should say we did specify that we wanted to um, swap fingering weight yarns. And I think we specified that it was, it was going to be sock yarn. So I think they're mostly 75-25s. Um, but we've got this, this kind of gives me campfire vibes. Like this would be awesome contrasting with a pair of socks with some sock camp. So we decided to swap 15 scraps. I think it was 15. So there's one bag. I probably will be here all day if I show them all to you. But oh, she has put some names in here actually of them, which is quite useful. So we've got this nice colour here with a really cute oh get him around the right way a really cute little frog oh he won't stay these nails are not very good for doing things like this <laughs> there we go um this one's beautiful because this has got selena in it so this is really sparkly um she has included some of the names actually so i must i must look at those this lovely bluey gray creamy colour and this oh my gosh this is me this is a bit of me I I love anything pinkies pinky shades and well I love all colours really but pink has a special place in my heart I do love a bit of pink um a few more to quickly show you this one is really pretty this is purpley Tonally. It's got a bit of yellow in it, a bit of browny speckles. And she was so sweet. I think she's caked most of these up. And I'm sorry, Gretchen, I didn't do that for you. <laughs> I wound them um, mostly because I just don't have the patience to cake up things this small. But I appreciate that you did. That was really kind of you. Another Stellina base. Here. This gives me Halloween vibes for some reason. I think it's because it's quite dark and moody. And I think one other bag to show you guys for these. This is probably, well, I say that with all of them, but I love these colours. These are probably my favourites out of the lot. Look at these. These are going to make something really pretty. Um, and so I think the idea was... We were to mail out our parcels by the 15th of June. And, oh, this is really pretty. Sorry, I'm getting really distracted with the yarn. Um, this has got some really nice speckles in it. The idea was that we mail out our parcels by the 15th of June so that everybody receives it in time. Because in the next quarter for our, so every quarter in the membership we do a make along. So the next quarter we, um, do a make along and last time it was, well right now currently it's still going on is the spring make along which is what I made the rocket tee for but we're going to do a scrappy project make along so the idea was that you scrap swap your scraps <laughs> that's really hard to say swap your scraps um, with your scrappy partner and use these scraps to make a project for the next quarter basically so this one you know i've said it about a few of them but i think this is my favorite just look at all those colors and the tones of them oh beautiful thank you so much gretchen um she did send me the yarn and oh there's another wait a minute there's another progress keeper i think i've, I've missed what is it oh really cute Look at that. Well, that one must have come off. That's why I missed it. You can't really see that very well, can you? There we go. That's a bit better. That's really sweet. Thank you so much, Gretchen. So she sent me the scraps and then she did also, she was very kind and sent me a couple of treats. Now, we obviously did chat back and forth and I did happen to mention that my favourite candy, or sweet, wherever you're from, from the US, the Swedish fish. I love these. Whenever we go um, to the States, I always bring a couple of bags of these home. So this is very much appreciated. Thank you, Gretchen. I got these ones, which are the only ones actually I've ever tried. I didn't realize there were other varieties. 
but I have opened them and tried them, so apologies that this is not a full packet to show you. But they also do tails now, so you get two flavours in one. So these, they're like half coloured each, so the, the fish is two colours. So blue raspberry and strawberry is one flavour, watermelon and pineapple is another, and raspberry and mango is another. So... Like I say, very well received. I may have already started nibbling on those. Thank you so much, Gretchen. I have messaged you and thanked you, but um, I really enjoyed opening that and it was really nice to receive. And so much earlier than I expected. The postal system must be great over there. And I'm hoping that that means yours will get to you very soon. So what else have I been doing this week? That's all of the knitting content, really. Um, not much has gone on over the past two weeks, I guess I should say. Um, I have been trying to watch quite a lot of podcasts this week. I know there are a few people in our membership now that have their own podcasts and shared them with us within our group. So I have been over and checked a few of them out. Not all of them yet, because it's just not enough hours in the day. Like I have this thing called a job, which is really incon inconsiderate. Inconvenient, I guess, is a better word. Um, and I could literally sit there and watch them all day. But if you have any recommendations of podcasts to watch, I'd really appreciate that too. I love finding new podcasters. And I know there are so many out there. And there's probably some great ones that I am missing. Um, as I mentioned previously in this episode, I found Laura from Penrose Knits. She has got the Knitting Pickle podcast. I got that right the knitting pickle podcast yes um she's fairly new to youtube she released her fifth podcast episode today um and i've binge watched them all week i've watched every single one now and i really like them so thank you laura um i really really love watching it when your new ones come out and i will continue to do so and i also found from Laura, which was really nice. Um, a couple of podcasts that she watches. I'm really sorry, can you hear that? That was the train going by. <laughs> I live near a train track here in the village and yeah, sometimes they're really loud. Other times I don't hear them. I guess it's warm, so I've got the windows open. So maybe that's why I probably should have shut those. But, um, I digress again. Oh my goodness. I think someone's also cutting their lawn. Sorry about that. Um, if that's bad, I will cut, cut that out. I'm hoping it's not as loud for you as it is for me. So yes, podcasts. Um, I was watching Laura and Laura suggested a couple of people that she watches too, which I am now trying to think of their names. I know one is Knitting, knitting Traditions. Um, I believe the lady's name is Inga. I watched her one of hers yesterday I'm not sure which one it was I think it was more, her most recent but I really loved it I'm gonna go back and binge watch those um there was another lady and I cannot remember her name I think her podcast name is free your sheep I think and I think her name might have been Anastasia I'm so sorry if that's not accurate I will absolutely put it down below um, in the comments section, but I've really enjoyed watching those podcasts. I watched one of hers too. Um, and like I say, I just need more hours in the day to get through them all. There are a couple of ladies in the group whose podcasts I haven't watched yet. So that is my plan over the weekend if I get some free time. But yes, there's not a lot been going on here. Work, back to work this week after my week off last week, which was really nice. We popped down to Devon to see my aunt which was lovely and the weather was really good to us. We spent the, we left super early, like 6 a.m. here, got there in really good time actually, little before 10, I think maybe it was quarter to 10. Um, so that was really nice because we like to get down there really early because otherwise you just lose the day, don't you, in the traffic and whatnot. So we did that, we went and saw them and we went kayaking with them, which was so fun. I've not done kayaking before and it was a true test of our marriage communication. Let me tell you that for sure. Um, I sat in the front as per my husband's request, which 
I wasn't all that pleased about. I'm not a navigator by any means. And obviously you don't really need to navigate because you're not really going anywhere in particular. You're just, you know, poodling along. But my sense of direction is bad. I use a sat nav to go everywhere. And so I really wanted to go in the back, but he was like, no, no, you go in the front. It'll be easier. The lighter person goes in the front. And I was like, mm, I'm not sure about that, but okay. Um, and it was fine. I think, I think because we hadn't done it before, the first initial part, there were a lot of people around in kayaks on the beach and paddle boards. And there were obviously kids in the water and we were trying to navigate past them all, I guess. And it was tricky because obviously you have to work as a team and I kept saying to him you can see my my paddle well paddle my oar I think is it called an oar on a kayak I'm not sure anyway you can see which way I'm I'm paddling and so you need to follow like my rhythm and do it the same way otherwise we're just doing our own thing and we're not really getting anywhere well he didn't really to be honest he tried <laughs> um but it did get quite choppy. The further out to sea we went, the further, uh, the more choppy it got. So that was fun. We did rock up to a couple of bays, which were so, so beautiful. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have my phone with me because we were warned that obviously you could get wet and I wasn't able to get many pictures. My aunt did take like a really, really retro um, digital camera and she was like, I don't care if it gets damaged. It's really old, but let's take it with us and see if we can get some pictures so we got a couple um and I shared them over on my oh no I think I shared them on my Instagram stories and obviously they won't be there anymore um yeah but it was so fun anyway I'm rambling I'm sorry that was really fun and then the following day we went cycling we took our bikes down with us on the back of the car and I think we ended up cycling about 15 miles we cycled from Barnstable to Instow had an ice cream and cycled back. So that was pretty fun. They've got um, a trail down on the coast called the Tarka Trail, and you can go around all different parts, like different, um... oh my goodness, what are all the words doing today? They're literally vanished. All of the different towns, that's the word I'm looking for, the different little towns of um, Devon, North Devon. So that was really fun. And then we came home. So the rest of the week, we didn't do a great deal. We, we just potted around. We helped my sister with a few jobs. Um, we went to see parents. I did a little bit of knitting, some, not much. I went to the gym a fair amount, which was nice. For my birthday, we went and had drinks at the beach bar and out for dinner, which was lovely. And then, yeah, back to work really. So back into routine now, the children are back at school. And I think they are until the end of July. And yeah, it's quite nice to be back to normal and into a bit of routine this week, which means I get to do a bit more knitting because I can take it to work with me. But anyway, I am now rambling and I think that is the end of my content. I have nothing else to add. Thank you so much if you tuned in and watched this podcast. I appreciate it's a bit lengthy. What are we at? 50 odd minutes. <laughs> But that could be shortened when I cut out my bloopers. So I hope you all have a great week and you have some time to do your craft of choice. Have a great day, stay safe, take care, and I will see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.